Who's a good boy? Watson. What's it come? In southwest London, Scott's patient Watson is out for his daily constitutional with concerned owner Nadair. Yeah, it's a good boy. But it's a much slower journey than it should be. Watson is just two years old, but walking like an old dog. That was not very fast. Yeah. When we got Watson, he was only 11 weeks old. And when he was just under a year old, they realized that he was developing arthritis in his joints. A bit further. Then in July, he started to severely limp. And when they then x-rayed him, they saw that it seems his elbows have deteriorated uh, a lot faster than we anticipated. No, that's it. Good. Watson's meals have been cut back to make him lose weight and try to ease the pressure on his joints. No, because you're not running around so much anymore. Hmm? That's it. But that's not working. For Watson, life is really tough at the moment because all the things he truly loves, the, the playing and the food, is all reduced to minimum. And that's why it's so important for us that Scott can come up with a solution there that allows him to return to a normal life. Hey, Nadea, how are you? Hello. How are you? Hi, Watson, you big handsome lad. Hey, Watson. Yeah. Hello, Welcome mate. Back. <laughs> Happy and handsome as always. Yes, but his elbows are... Oh, again, a little bit of a problem. Right, well, what I'm going to do is ask you just to take him to walk up to mm -hmm. the window and back just so I can see him go for a walk. Okay. Yes. Come, come, Watson, come. Hey. Come. He's just a good boy. And turn around. Yeah, he's looking sore, go isn't back. he? Go back. Go back. As soon as I clamp eyes on Watson, I can see that he is walking like he's walking on hot coals. And this is a two-year-old dog. He should be bounding in, happy as Larry. Come on, mate. I know. Am I going to have to use food? <laughs> yes. No, Watson, come here. This direction. Come on, come on, over there. come on. Oh, oh, you're not a big fan of this room, are you? It's no. where those elbows start to hurt, Too isn't often. it? Come on then, through you go. Good boy. That's there good go. boy. Good lad. Good boy. All right, now I'm going to have a little feel of your elbows. So you're going to be brave. So, Dad, if you can just hold Watson. in there for me. What's in seat? Good boy. Sit. Stay oh, there. That's, that's it. Yeah, I know. Let's have, I know. Oh. It feels awful. It feels like a real nuts and bolts mm. feeling. It's grinding. It's just not nice. And joints like that should not feel like that in a two-year-old dog. I mean, they are arthritic elbows. And normally you might find that in a dog 10, 12, 14 not in a happy, healthy, boisterous two-year-old Labrador. We know Watson's got arthritis and it's clearly getting worse, despite Nadir's best efforts to contain it. So the way forward is to do an arthroscopy, which means placing a small camera into the joint to see exactly what's going on and if there's anything that can be done. So I think the best way forward is to send him straight to my mate, Michael Hamilton, and let's hope there's something that could be done for this gorgeous boy. We've done everything we could do in a non-invasive way, but sadly it hasn't worked. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a real pity, and whatever is necessary to, let's say, bring him back into that direction, bring him back to, to be really happy again. And I don't know if it's reversible, um, but at least if it can get better rather than worse over time, uh, that would be really, really good. Yeah, I think he deserves that much. That's a good point. Going home now, no? And then it's nearly dinner time. Just off the south coast on the Isle of Wight, <laughs> yeah. Scott's good friend, Tiger Sanctuary owner Charlotte, is worried about her beloved 21-year-old Zia. Hello. <laughs> Hello, sweetie. Hello. <laughs> Recently, the elderly Bengal tiger has struggled with painful ingrown toenails, and Charlotte has also noticed blood in her urine. <laughs> yeah, you're talking. Mm. I find it hard to put into words what she means to me because there's no words to express it. You know, she's, she's a very special part of my life. But she's an old lady now, and in the wild, 10 to 15 years is what tigers generally get. So at 21, she's very much in the geriatric camp, really. What is it, babe? <laughs> I know. Charlotte's father, Jack Corney, bought the zoo on the island in the late 70s. 
Zia came to them when she was just a few days old, after her mother rejected her at birth. Charlotte was given the responsibility of rearing her. We lived in a caravan together. She slept in my bed and she'd get in my bath and I'd take her for walks out on the beach. Hey, Zia. <laughs> like all the tigers here, there was no chance of Zia being released back into the wild. With Bengal tigers now an endangered species, Charlotte's efforts are part of a worldwide conservation push to preserve their numbers. Tina, baby. I feel so privileged to have had this experience, but I wish that I'd never have met them and that they'd been able to live in the wild as wild tigers. That's what I would have rather for them, but that wasn't the case, and so it's been the next best thing to be able to be their custodian, really. After much soul-searching, Charlotte has decided Zia must have veterinary intervention. But any anaesthetic for such an old tiger is a huge risk. The biggest fear is that Zia won't come through it. <laughs> you know, that's, that is um, fundamentally my biggest concern. Scott has known Charlotte for 10 years and is going to help with the operation alongside three big cat experts. He's worked of course, mainly with um, domestic cats, but a cat is a cat, you know, whether it's this big or whether it's this big. So I think we've got, you know, um, the A-team. Scott has now travelled down from London and is on the ferry to the Isle of Wight. This is not the first time Scott and Charlotte have worked together. Ten years ago, Charlotte asked Scott to be part of a veterinary team overseeing a massive logistical operation to move one of her tigers into an upgraded enclosure. So when the call came about Zia, Scott immediately volunteered. I've always had a massive love for tigers and the conservation of this species is so important to me. I've just arrived on the Isle of Wight and my goodness, is it white. It is so foggy, it's negative one degree. It's absolutely freezing, but I'm just so excited to see Charlotte. She is a friend, she's someone who I respect massively and I know how much she cares about these tigers. They aren't just tigers that she's looked after. They are tigers that have lived with her, have grown up with her, and she has a massive bond with. So I know that her heart will break if something goes wrong today, and I'm here to make sure that I can support her no matter what happens. Hello. Hello. Welcome uh, back. Thank you so much. What a bizarre day, though. I know. It's like got it's, a certain atmosphere, hasn't it's a bit it? Foggy and a bit mm, creepy, and um, isn't it? it's quite beautiful though. It's exceptionally beautiful. Mm. Um, probably not as beautiful as uh, the animals that you look after. <laughs> so, um, trimming your cat's nails, hey? Yeah, some little kitty cats for you today. Yeah. 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 yeah I'm sure. Small ones. Just tidy ones. Yeah. 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 Not. Not the man eaters. Not those ones. No. no. <laughs> These are just my little girls. <laughs> Waiting for Scott in their enclosure, Azia and her sister, Zena. I'm just so excited to see these girls again. I can't believe it's been <laughs> 10 years. Time flies. And there they are. There they are, with little Zena. Oh. Zia and Zena are there in all their majestic glory. These two are absolute stunners. Hello, beautiful. <laughs> Maybe they remember you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's I, a greeting. I remember my chuffing. Last time he was here, Scott learned how to talk in tiger language. That's one thing I do <laughs> remember. Good. Thank you. You must have been practicing again. <laughs> <laughs> Chuffing's an sort of F sound. And it's a, a sort of big vibration that they produce as it goes through their nose and out. And it's a, a, a happiness gesture, and it's uh, lovely when they say it back. You're a rest old girl. You've got a big day ahead, haven't you? While Scott's happy just to be close to these beautiful animals, this is not a social visit. Zia's procedure to remove her ingrown toenails and investigate her bladder problem is scheduled for later today. Ooh, she's licking that right paw. Mm. I'm going to sort that out for you. Scott's first task is moving the tiger into a separate enclosure. Zia! 
just let her come through. Oh, now you can start putting it down carefully. We're going to sort those sore mm. paws out, aren't we, honey? Hey? And you've got to be a good girl. You've got to be nice and calm. Hmm? Mm. You've got to be a good patient. Yes. She's 21 years old. It's not easy, as you know, um, anaesthetizing older animals. Um, things can go wrong. Mm. She's a tough old cookie, so I'm really hoping that she's going to take everything nice and calmly and she's going to come through the other end. I can't imagine life without Zia. <laughs> yeah. Would be at the end of an era. Sort that out for you. Yes, we are. Scott has travelled to the Isle of Wight to help out a tiger in trouble at the local zoo. Today, Zia will be anaesthetised so her painful ingrown nails can be removed. The vet team will also check her bladder and kidneys after Charlotte recently noticed blood in the tiger's urine. Be nice and calm. Hmm. Gotta be a good patient. Mm -hmm. But this will be a high-risk mission, and Charlotte is extremely concerned that her much-loved 21-year-old tiger may not survive the procedure. It's like trying to give an anaesthetic to a grandmother and hoping it's going to be just fine, and a lot of the time it won't be. There's lots of possible complications here, and it's understandable that Charlotte is incredibly worried. Well, Charlotte's a moment of truth, and... Oh, God, I don't know how you must be feeling. I'm totally in love with her, and I've only met her twice. God knows the depth of emotion you must be feeling, being that she's been by your side for 21 years. You know, my heart is I can tell you're feeling beating. emotional, aren't you? It's beating, yeah, yeah. it's beating. But... So it's sort of say goodbye time now, isn't it, really? Yeah, I've got to say goodbye. Mm. Fingers crossed. Paws yes. crossed. Paws crossed, yes. Mm -hmm. First, Zia needs to be anaesthetised with a dart gun. I'll dart her. And when she's gone down, I'll go in and assess her. Yeah. Dr. John Lewis is a world-renowned wildlife expert and specialises in anaesthetics for big cats. They are very exciting close up. And you can see pictures of tigers, you can watch films of tigers, but it's not until you get your hands on a tiger that they impress you the most. That'll do. Okay, I'm allowed to go in now. With Zia sedated, Scott can now enter the tiger's den. This is just an awesome experience to be a vet and this close to a tiger. I think my heart's going like a million miles an hour. We're all acutely aware, of course, that at any second Zia could wake up, so none of us can let our guard down even for a second. Very slow, deep respirations, yep. but you can still see and looking at the abdomen here. And we're checking our oxygen levels over here, so they're all good. Charlotte's very lucky that she has invited three amazing veterinary specialists today. John is a specialist in the anaesthetics of wild cats. And then we've also got Kit, who is a specialist in internal medicine, and he's gonna be looking at Zia's bladder today. And then we've got Matt, who's the regular vet here at the zoo. Just there, I've discovered that that one's digging right in. No wonder she was licking at that, that would have really hurt. Yeah. That's, that's going to be sore for her, so we'll basically clip that and all the others to stop the same thing happening. you basically just got to be aware all the time of what could go wrong and what are the dangers, because, as I say, with domestics, getting bitten and scratched is bad enough, but, yeah, with obviously a tiger, it's the next level, really. So I about to my finger there. Good about, yep. Oh, man. Oh, gee, yeah, that's a thick one. So I think the whole cutting of the claws is a little bit more of a brute kind of procedure than maybe Scott was um, reckoning on. I mean, they are really tough, those claws. Oh, man. Oh. And you only get a, a good impression of that when you're up close with them and trying to cut through them. Oh, man, I'm lucky I go to the gym. I tell you what, that's full on. Dr. Kit Sturges is now using an ultrasound to check Zia's bladder and kidneys. I'm going to place a needle into the bladder and get a sample of urine. But suddenly, John notices that Zia appears to be stirring. He's waking up. Can you leave? Anybody who doesn't need to be in here probably shouldn't be in here. So 
a good boy. Oh, let's go, yeah? Near Marlow, Buckinghamshire, it's also a stressful time for the owners of Scott's patient, two-year-old Watson. Nadair, his wife Lyra and daughter Nadia, are about to find out their Labrador's fate. I love Watson so, so much. We came today so we can be there for him and support him. Good boy. Watson's prematurely arthritic elbows are ruining his quality of life. So Scott has referred him to specialist orthopaedic surgeon, Michael Hamilton. Hey, hello everybody. Hello. Nice to meet you all, how do you do? How My name is Michael, hello Hi. there. Got the whole family here. Yeah. There we go, hello team. Hello Watson, hello my friends. Oh, he's gorgeous, isn't he? Wow, he's a big lad. Do you want to dance? Can we go for a dance? We love Watson. I know we can't actually imagine life without him. And hopefully, um, we'll find out exactly what's wrong. They'll be able to fix it. Right, OK, so let's have a feel. So you might not be a big fan of some of these things. Right, ready? OK, so one, two, three. OK, now this is a little specific test here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, not a big fan, not a big fan. OK, now I'm going to do that on the other side. The problem is that his elbow joint is not a perfect fit. That's the bottom line. You get abnormal wear and tear, and he rubs away this all-important stuff called articular cartilage, which is the shiny, non-stick surface uh, in all of our joints. We need to put a camera in his elbow joints, mm -hmm. and we need to find out how much erosion of what's called the articular cartilage has occurred, because that will really dictate what our options are surgically. So at one end of the spectrum, we can just remove a little corner of bone via the camera, a keyhole surgery. So that's kind of what we're hoping for today. The other end of the spectrum is you might have relatively few surgical options available to us, in which case we just have to kind of manage him with a whole kind of range of different techniques, if you like. At the moment, we just got to put a camera in and see where we are on the scale of kind of good to bad. I really hope he'll get better soon so he can be a proper dog again and like run around and play and do things he likes. There you are. Bye-bye, Watson. Bye, Watson. Watson will now be admitted and Michael will carry out the arthroscopy tomorrow. It's just this unknown that we are facing. So I'm a little bit nervous and a little bit worried for Watson. Just hoping that it all turns out to the, to the best. Right then, big man, we're going this way. Right, you ready? Let's go. Come on then, there you go. Oh, he's off, he's off. Hello. Yeah, he's waking up. Can you leave? Anybody who doesn't need to be in here probably shouldn't be in here. On the Isle of Wight, the ultrasound on 21-year-old Bengal tiger Zia has been halted after the big cat showed signs of waking up from her anaesthetic. Just in the process of taking a urine sample via a needle into her bladder. But Z is waking up a little bit, so John's concerned, which is why I'm behind the bars now, to be a bit safer. You can come back. The level of Zia's anaesthetic has been increased, and the ultrasound on her bladder and kidneys can now begin. She's got a couple of renal cysts, Not, nothing big. The ultrasound has located some small cysts in Zia's kidneys. Fortunately, the vets are satisfied they're not responsible for the blood in the tiger's urine. Small cysts in, in kidneys, in the, in, the, in the renal cortex, the outside of the kidney in old tigers are not unusual. So, we're all good, we're in the clear. I mean, if you scanned me or I'm sure not you, Scott. Absolutely you not, but old tigers like you, for sure. <laughs> well, you'd find things wrong. Yeah. Bits of this, bits of that, which aren't clinically significant. It appears likely the blood has been caused by a condition called cystitis, a bladder Same infection. Zia will be given tablets to prevent the condition reoccurring. Okay, sweetheart. But there is one more potential issue that Scott wants to check out. Once we've finished checking out Zia's urinary tract, I'm then able to assess her eyes. I did notice that when she was in her enclosure and then in her bedroom before we knocked her out, she was winking a little bit with her left eye. And then examining that eye, we used just the same dyes that we would at the Richmond practice with my feline patients, put a little bit of dye in there, it stains onto her cornea and I can see that there's a little tiny corneal ulcer. Yeah, she's got a tiny little mark, can you see that? Just there. Yeah, so it's really tiny and quite superficial. So with a little bit of flushing out that eye, it should make a full recovery, but 
What an amazing experience for me, putting dye in a tiger's eye and then getting to examine it. Unbelievable. It's been a successful afternoon and Zia can now be woken up. She's in a safe direction now. She's got to pause that way. And if you think about it, if she starts getting up, these bits are facing over there. Yeah. So it makes it a lot safer for you to exit. Exit stage right and quietly, calmly, with dignity. Yeah. Okay, time to go. Yep. It's been amazing to work with this dedicated team and to see Zia be healthy and to wake up to live another day has been uh, really special, amazing. Later that night, as Zia recovers, Charlotte still can't relax. Are you counting sheep? Good girl. I like to just be here to know she's okay rather than be worrying about her at home. She used to sleep with me in my bed, so I'd wake up in the morning and she'd be all snuggled up there, and it's not quite that close, you know, but it's nice to even just hear her breathing, and yeah, it's like, you know, 21 years ago, really. No, no, Zia. Sleep well and sweet dreams, baby. I'm gonna be dreaming of Scotty, maybe tonight. It's Scott's second day on the Isle of Wight. And the vet from the mainland is about to get involved with another very different case from his normal cats and dogs back in Richmond. This time, it's a local donkey with a terrible sinus problem. Now, I don't treat too many donkeys in Richmond, but I'm always up for a challenge. The patient resides at a sanctuary that looks after abandoned donkeys. Hello, Derek. Hello, Scott. How are you? Hello. Welcome to the Isle of Wight. Welcoming really? Scott is the sanctuary's yeah, manager, Derek. We've got 93 donkeys. Wow. They lead a fantastic life. These donkeys are part of the heritage of this island. They pulled the milk floats, they worked the beaches of Shanklin and Sandown and Ride. These donkeys didn't ask to be made homeless, they didn't ask to be abandoned, and were determined that they'll have a proper home here because without us feeding them and looking after them, they have nothing. Well, they seem very happy yeah, and very healthy, but I hear that you've actually got a donkey that's not too healthy, is that right? There's a donkey we'd like you to see today called Poppy. Okay. She's one of our most popular donkeys. Right. She's been struggling with uh, a clogging up of her sinuses, causing her a lot of discomfort, and we just simply can't unblock her nose. And so it's been a tough few weeks for her. Yeah. Oh, you are nice. Like you a lot. Yes, even with your gunky nose, hey? Farm manager Julia has been looking after Poppy, but the donkey's deteriorating condition has now forced her to choose more invasive treatment. So how long has she had a snotty nose for? A couple of weeks. We've noticed there was a little bit of discharge, so we used to clean her nose, mm -hmm. but then the discharge didn't stop. It was more and more and more. Poppy is suffering with something called sinusitis, which is an inflammatory condition of the nasal passages. It can be caused by a number of different things, anything from just a pure infection or as a result of something more sinister like cancer. OK, let me introduce you to our vet. Always willing to expand his expertise, Scott will be learning some Hi. new veterinary Hello. tricks Hello. from Hello. equine okay. vets Kate and Larry as they try nice to unblock to Poppy's nose. We've brought the x-ray along to show you. I think it gives you a really good visual idea of what's going on. And we can see we've got the white line across here, which is fluid and pus accumulating underneath. So that's a pool of snot, basically. Pretty much snot, pus, general mankiness that we need to get out. So what we're going to be doing today is drilling into that sinus and releasing all that gunk, flushing it all out and making her feel a lot better. So we're actually going to drill a hole into Poppy's head. We're actually going to drill a hole into Poppy's head. Oh, my goodness. He's a big, brave boy. Near Marlow, Buckinghamshire, orthopaedic specialist surgeon Michael Hamilton is about to put a camera into Watson's arthritic elbows to find out if there's anything he can do to help the two-year-old Labrador. 
We don't know what we're going to find until we put the camera in. We may get a pleasant surprise, we might get a very unpleasant surprise. So we just don't know. Okay, so we're in. Right, clear lights off. Okay, so let's see what we've got. That's horrible, isn't it? Look at that. This is not very good. The investigation into the Labrador's left elbow is immediately ringing alarm bells. First thing I can see is there's quite a large region of red bone, which is not good. And the inference is that the lower piece of bone that is responsible for rubbing away all the cartilage of the upper piece of bone. Michael and Nurse Fiona now need to chip away at the lower bone that is causing Watson's problems. I'm gonna remove the lower piece of bone via a tiny little hole, via watching it on the TV and then pull it out kind of piecemeal through the little hole, keyhole style. It's a bit like cutting your hair in the mirror, arthroscopy, which I do all the time, hence my crap hair. <laughs> right, for you go. Quite right, hard, yeah. Hard, 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 hard. Go on, smack it. Give it some welly. <laughs> Give it some welly, go on. That's it, go on. That's it, go. This is all coming out piecemeal. This corner of bone that's got no cartilage on it. Right, so here's a good piece. Whoa, that's quite a big piece. So the theory is now, what's left behind has still got cartilage on it. And if it's got cartilage on it, hopefully it's not rubbing. So we are done on this side. Moving on to Watson's right elbow, Michael's hoping to find less cartilage erosion. But it turns out to be even worse than the left. So that's all red bone, all red bone. I can't do on this side what I did on the other side. It's too far gone. There's a big iceberg of a fragment sitting right in the middle of the screen there. We'll get that fragment out and then we'll kind of see what we've got. In go the little grabbers. Removing that fragment, I have no fantasy that that's really going to make a huge difference for this dog. This side is an awful lot worse than the opposite side. For Michael the perfectionist, it's been a tough day in theatre. So the million dollar question is, is, is what we've done today going to improve him? Uh, I don't know. Watson's owners just want him to run around the park, not in pain without a limp. Me too. Can I swallow for me? So we just got to keep our fingers tightly crossed and hopefully he's one of those dogs where the limp does go away, or at least improve. Hey, handsome man. I can hear your belly rumbling. Hold on. So we're actually going to drill a hole into Poppy's head. We're actually going to drill a hole into Poppy's head, through the skull, take a bit of bone out, have a look inside her head. Oh, my goodness. We've just fallen in love, and now you're going to affect her looks. <laughs> On the Isle of Wight, Scott's assisting with an operation to clean out rescue donkey Poppy's badly infected sinuses. Equine vets Kate and Lara make up the surgical team. She is going to have a hole drilled into her nose, but she's not gonna be knocked out fully, which just shows how resilient and how tough these beautiful creatures really are. Ready for this? <sighs> Ready as I'll ever be, yeah. Okay. The concern is the donkey's infection may be caused by a tumor in her nasal passages. The only way to know is to go inside and take a look. All right, I'm ready for it. Just go with the flow, yeah. yeah so just, if you guys tell me if you're happy with the positioning. Pushing this drill into Poppy's head, it's quite a frightening experience because you think, you know, how far is this going to go? It will take a little while, so it's not an instantaneous thing. Procedures on farm animals are often done under local anaesthetic to avoid the risk of a general anaesthetic and the stress of moving them from their normal environment to a hospital. That's oh. the hardest bit, is getting started. Oh, Poppy, my God. He'll feel it as it goes through. You almost get a pop and you get a relief of the pressure as you're pushing on it. So he'll suddenly dive in and then he'll be through into the sinus. OK, she's going back. Oh, oh, oh my God. There you go. Right. Yeah, Jesus, so that was gross. Yeah, oh, my God, that was revolting. <laughs> I'm sorry, okay. sweetie, but that was okay. horrid. Does it feel like it's free? Finally, I pop through and it's quite a sickening feeling, but now we can have good access into the nasal cavity and see what's causing that infection for Poppy. It's amazing. So I'm just using the endoscope and I can see normal healthy mucosa, which is sort of the membrane covering the nasal cavity and then a bit of a pool of gross stuff. We haven't found any tumors or anything nasty, so hopefully it's a really good result for Poppy. 
but does seem like this is a fairly classic sinusitis and with good flushing over the next week and antibiotics, Poppy should make a full recovery. Keep the girly puppet. A draining tube will stay in place for a few days to make sure the sinuses are totally cleared. Despite the fact that she's now got a hole in her head, she's probably thinking, yeah, this is a good day. <laughs> wow. Well, she's had some bad days, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> mm, you OK? Yeah, you're lovely. Well, you know, you probably looked nicer, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right then. Hello, my friend. Oh, I see you've eaten all your dinner. It's been four Got hours on since your Michael face. operated you on out? Watson's Come elbows. Oh, and the Labrador geez. can't Wait. wait oh. to go home. Keen to go? <laughs> Are you going to tell everyone that you've not been fed? I think there's evidence to say otherwise on your face. Outside in reception, Watson's worried owners are anxious to hear the surgeon's verdict. OK. Look who's here to see you. Watson! OK. <laughs> you see this tail has not stopped wagging. <laughs> And so what we've done inside both elbows is, is we've, we've removed some bone to prevent it rubbing on the opposite surface, on both sides. So we've done what we can for now. Your job is to keep going with the diet, keep going with the anti-inflammatories. So Nadir and Leah now have the unenviable task of trying to restrict a Labrador's food intake. Not easy. Watson, food. Din, din, you've just been fed. I fed you. He forgot. <laughs> he looked so guilty, he finished all that off. He forgot him. <laughs> so Watson has a problem that we can't fix. It's not like a dog with a broken leg that you fix the bone and they're as good as new. That is not the case. He's got problems in his elbows that he's going to have for the rest of his life. But we've treated him today with some techniques that will hopefully at worst improve him a little bit and at best resolve his lameness in the medium to longer term. We are going to put him on various supplements, we're going to keep him on an analgesics, and we'll, and we'll take it from there. It's a bit of a sad picture, but uh, we're very happy to have him back. Yeah, it's supposed to be a long day. Right, Watson, my friends, I shall see you in six weeks, looking trim and fit and svelte, and hopefully without a limp, or at least with less of a limp than you had today. So, uh, fingers crossed for him. So, um, But we can't do any more, guys, so over to you. Okay. okay, thank you very much. It's my thank pleasure. You. Safe journey thank back. You. It was lovely to thank meet you, you all. Okay, you. you're very lucky, Watson. At the Isle of Wight, Poppy's recovering well from invasive surgery to clean out her infected sinuses. Here we go. Good girl, hey? Hey? Yeah. Good girl. Nasty surgery. Didn't ruin your appetite, did it? Good girl, and you don't have a snotty nostril anymore. Wow. I'm just so amazed at how strong and brave and stoic these creatures are. I've drilled a hole into this poor girl's face, and she's still nuzzling up to me, giving me kisses. She must be feeling better. Good girl. Come on, man. Let's get you in. In we go. Come on, then. Oh, Let's go see look who it is. There she oh, is. Poppy. There we go. Hello, Poppy. Ah. And cool now to Poppy see you. is up to having oh. visitors. Oh. Sanctuary oh. manager Derek has there dropped in are. with one of her oh. best mates. How are you? And everybody looks very concerned over the wall, I can see. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there's been quite the audience today. I've felt under pressure, but hopefully I've uh, delivered. Brilliant. <laughs> I'm very lucky to come here to work with these incredible vets and to see Derek and all the great work that he's doing here. These animals need these people and together it's a beautiful relationship. They're beautiful animals and they're really lucky to have a wonderful place to live. Thanks for having me and I hope that uh, Poppy makes a full recovery. That's great. Thanks Derek. You look after that girl for me. Bye Poppy. On his way to his next job, Scott is checking in with surgeon Michael Hamilton. Hey, Scotty. How you doing, mate? Hey, Michael. Just calling to see how Watson's getting on. 
Yeah, no, he's fine. Everything went well. Um, he's got a bit more erosion of his cartilage than I was kind of hoping for. But we've removed the little piece of bone that I think is causing all the problems. So hopefully he'll do okay. But we uh, we just got to wait and see, really. So, um, but yeah, but he's fine. He's fine. Well, I know that family's so dedicated. They love him to bits. So I'm sure they'll do everything that's uh, needed to get him as right yeah. as possible. How's the other white treating you, mate? Oh, the white's awesome, mate. Um, yeah, I've uh, I've been treating tigers and uh, and I've just drilled a hole in a donkey's head. So pretty eventful, really. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, well, listen, mate. I've, uh, I'll speak to you later. I've got a dash. I've got all ready to go. So um, uh, let's catch up very soon. Okay, mate. All the best. Cheers for that. Okay. okay bye. 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 Scott has one last assignment for the day back at the zoo. His next patient is a cantankerous 150 kilogram pig. Clara Winston's in here. Winston is in here. Would you like to go in? I would like would to go in. brave enough? I, I think so. Okay. <laughs> You're so mean to me. Unbelievable. What am I going to find? Like a velociraptor? All right, Winston, eh? You're going to be a good boy for us, hmm? Wow! Here he is. This is Winston, the miraculous micro. Pig. It's actually a macro pig. Yeah, there's, there's, there's really nothing micro about him at all, is there? Winston is a very strong-willed sort of character, shall we say. Yeah, he's not short of personality or attitude. Is he a fairly friendly chap? Can I jump in and say hi? Or You could. It, it would be, be, be great to witness that, yeah. wouldn't it? How much do you like your legs? Winston has a bad reputation for being antisocial, so today he needs to be castrated, and farm yes. animal vet Jenny needs all the help she can get. Winston is a nice pig when he wants to be a nice pig. Yes, good boy, Winston. When something happens that he doesn't like, he makes that displeasure known. He can get very grumpy and he is a bit bitey. Um, and an adult pig of that size can go through a welly boot and your leg. So that's quite a danger. Winston doesn't like pain <laughs> and uh, he's very sensitive to needles. And as soon as he feels a needle, he turns into a bit of a drama pig. He gets overexcited, he has a tendency to jump things, um, and he starts biting people. Wow, okay, so, so friendly chat then. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Winston is not the kind of guy to take things lying down. So instead, we've pulled out the big guns, which is to grab the dart gun that we usually use for like the tigers and the lions in the sanctuary. But this time, we're gonna use it on a pig. Right, you happy, Charles? Yeah. Great. Charles is gonna be doing the shooting today. So she's the head keeper here. She knows what she's doing. Um, so we're leaving it in her capable hands. All right, all right, Winston. All right, all right. Calm down, calm down. All right, champ. Soon you're going to be 150 milligrams of sleepy pork. That's the plan. That He's was... super mad, though. Isn't he? Oh yeah. Those aren't sweet, friendly noises, are nope. they? Nope. That's that's a bark of. If you were in here, I'd have your leg. See if we can get the snare in his mouth and see how awake he is. So just be okay. prepared for a sharp exit. <laughs> okay. Oh, seems like one very sleepy pig. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> At the Isle of Wight Zoo, the cranky 150 kilo Winston has finally succumbed to his sedation and his castration can get underway. Those tusks are absolutely incredible, aren't they? Yeah, My they're pretty, uh, pretty feisty Huge. things. And, Gosh, yeah. I really don't want those uh, in my leg. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, they would go through your welly. Scott and Jenny will be removing the pig's testicles to hopefully calm down his aggressive behaviour oh, and stop him from producing. Wow, you are one massive Come pig. Come on, big pig. Whoa. It's a little unusual for Scott. It's not quite what he's used to. He's used to his nice small animal theatre with his table and his lights and his heating and his nurses to pass him things. And we're on our knees in a barn full of straw with a large pig in a small amount of space. So hopefully he'll manage. As the only other male in the room, Scott is feeling some sympathy for Winston. Every single bloke that would watch this would wince right now. Wow, tear it off, eh? All right, Winston. Here we are, one big so, testicle. 
Going through the process of castrating a pig was something that I haven't done in a very long time. But one part of the technique was quite excruciating as a bloke, was the twisting of the testicles. Seeing them twisted like that, I think... Yeah, it's a little harsh, but... It's a little you know, harsh, yeah. It's all for his own good. Yeah. I'm the good of his lady friends. So. <laughs> yes, yeah. You can stop so, pestering them. Second testicle. Second testicle. Done. Sorry. Scott seems to be wincing a little bit, but there we are, facts of life. You're saying us small animal vets are delicate? Yes, delicate flowers, a lot of you. Once both testicles are out, it's a relief and now it's time to close up. Winston's responding very well to this procedure. Now he's got blue balls or blue non-balls. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> all right, let's Great. wake you up, big guy. Yeah. Hey. And after it's all done, I think, you know what? We need a little bit of male bonding, so we spend some time together. Good boy. You're such a brave boy. What a handsome chap you are. Yeah, those girls will still like you the same. They will. It will take Winston two hours to snore off the sedation before being put back in his yard. Later that afternoon, Scott's ready to return back to London, but he has some important goodbyes. The first one with the feisty Winston. Yes. You're doing well, mate, aren't you? You've woken up quickly, hey? Hey, bit of food for the piggy? Hey. Is that your way of saying sorry? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, I'm buying his affection. It's a good thing at this point that Winston can't fully communicate how he's feeling. But if only we could communicate properly with him, I think he'd be thanking us for what we've done because it should make, you know, life in this pig camp an awful lot easier. The second farewell is with Zia. She is walking so much better now, isn't she? She is, yeah. And she's, I think, feeling really relieved on her little feet. Yesterday, the Bengal tiger had to undergo a risky anaesthetic so the vets could remove her painful ingrown toenails. Well, now the nail's shorter and that it's not growing into the pad, she's going to be so much more comfortable. So yeah, it really was the right thing to do. <laughs> Would you like to give her a piece of chicken breast? Yes, please. Well, here you go. She'll baby. love you forever. Oh, yum. Yum. It doesn't last for long, does it? <laughs> no, it Think doesn't. how long it would take us. I'm really glad it's all over. I'm a very happy tiger mum at the moment. It's so funny, up close like this, she just acts like any domestic cat <laughs> yeah, would, yeah. you know? She's yeah. hungry, she loves her mum, she loves her fuss. Just happens to be a really large, very beautiful tiger. I think we've all been really impressed with Scott. You know, I know he's more used to dealing with cats on a micro level, you know, but he's supersized his abilities oh, here. Yummy. He's been an absolute pleasure to have as part of our part of our zoo team. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of it. It's been such a wow, just a once in a lifetime experience. Well, you're a great help. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Tiger manicurist. Tick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks, Charlotte. Okay. Cheers. Oh. I feel incredibly honoured and very lucky that I've been able to share this experience with Charlotte. It's amazing that there are places like this looking after these incredible animals in the love and care and support of the very dedicated Charlotte. Hello everyone, this is like Happy Families. Hello. 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 Look at you <laughs> bounding around like a spring lamb. Hey. Yes, How are you? Hello. How Good are, are you? Good to see you. Hello. Hi. Yeah, he's doing Hello. a lot better. Very and good. six weeks later, oh, back yeah, in Richmond, Scott has come to see yeah. Watson's progress since the keyhole surgery on his elbows. Yeah, and you're walking really pretty well considering everything you've been through. <laughs> and still jumping very well. Oh, yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so much better. So much yeah. better. Do you feel he's feeling a bit younger these days? Oh, yes, he's like a puppy again. Yeah, no, you're like yeah. a puppy again. Yeah, thank you so much. He's doing so well. And the whole family came together, really, trying to help Watson uh, in his recovery and to uh, get him back to his normal doggy life. 
You are so forward, honestly, aren't you? Hey? One of the main reasons to be a vet is to give the patients in our care quality of life. And for Watson, that's to be pain-free and to enjoy time with his owners. And I think we've achieved exactly that. A happy boy who loves his owners. I think you're like a dog version of me. <laughs> hey? Hey? Yeah, yeah, a little bit over-affectionate, a little bit over-enthusiastic. Hey? <laughs> Good boy. <laughs>